I see food as an enemy. Katie says anorexia is a lifestyle, not a disease. I'm dying to be anorexic again. Lavinia uses sheer willpower to resist hunger. They're part of an internet community in pursuit of the skinniest bodies possible, regardless of the damage to their health. They are the pro-anorexics, and for the first time, this is their story. This is me, from top to toe. As you can see, I'm covered in lard. Lavinia Walker, age 24, 68 kilograms, 10 stone 7. They're massive. I can't even fit my bloody hand round them. The stats say she's average. Lavinia doesn't agree. Flabby and horrible. Lavinia suffered a lifetime of anorexia and other mental health problems. Imagine having a whole lump this removed. I think I'll lose about a stone from my body with each one removed. At one time I could fit my hand completely around here. But now, look at it. Fat. Fat. Bloody everywhere. Today, apart from her all-consuming obsession for not consuming, Lavinia leads a normal life. She has a degree, a full-time job in Oxford, and she's buying a flat. I'm dying to be anorexic again because I want to lose the weight. Lavinia is a pro-anorexic, or a pro-ana. Someone who chooses to live periods of their life eating practically nothing and aiming for the skinniest body possible. I just want to cut them all completely off. Imagine cutting about that much off. Now that'd be good. She's now decided to be anorexic again, as she's recording an intimate video diary over 15 weeks to chart her progress. I know when people say I'm thin, I'm going to see myself as still really fat and stuff and I'm going to carry on and carry on and carry on. It's like an endless cycle. This is day one in the Big Belly house. Katie Parker, 17, is also a pro-anorexic. And there was loads of girls just flocking down the street with perfect tan, thin bodies and their nice little flat bellies. Katie's not like Lavinia, who lives alone. She shares the agony and the drama of her condition with sister Emma, brother Ali, and her mum and dad in a small Wiltshire bungalow. I see food as an enemy because food was controlling me. Being prana has made me happier. Katie also has a history of mental health problems caused by family upheavals, especially her parents splitting up for two years. She's been on extreme diets before, but say she doesn't have an eating disorder, she just wants to lose weight. It's like you're on a tightrope. One side is you could get really fat, and then the other side is you could get really ill and, you know, be full-blown anorexic. In the middle, which is where I am, you can have a structured way of eating, little but healthy. Yeah, but can you understand my point of view? Because yeah, every time you get to a targeted weight, you say to me, oh, well, I'm not happy with it. I want to go less. So when you get to seven and a half stone, yeah, is it going to be another case of, oh, well, I'm not happy with this. I want to get down to seven stone. And then it'll be six and a half stone. And then six stone. No, it won't. Because that's, so that's when panic Ill. sets in, Katie. I know. I start panicking then because... I think, well, yeah, she's still heading towards this anorexic state. I know that I want to get seven stone four, and at seven stone three, last time I was seven stone three, I remember I didn't like it at all. Mm. So I don't, I think I, I'll be able to, like, say stop. Anorexia nervosa is a condition of minimal eating and extremely low body weights. Bulimia, Vomiting food after it's eaten is often involved. People can go in and out of the condition. They have anorexic minds, if not anorexic bodies. And Lavinia's one of them. 
Every single morning I have to weigh myself. If I don't, I panic. I need to know how much I weigh. It's just um, some kind of control. Well, don't look at me. I'm not looking at you, don't worry. You are? I've got my eyes closed. No, I want you to look at the scales. Oh, no. Oh. Okay. Right. It's the start of a daily naked ritual for Lavinia. And today it's filmed by her trusted friend, Bob. God, I've gained weight again. Now I'm really pissed off and upset. I'm going to have to do something else to try and make me lose more weight. Every single time I weigh myself, I have to um, make sure that I have nothing on me at all. I have to make sure I don't have my watch on, my necklace on, my hairband on. I just feel like if I have anything on, then my weight will increase massively and it will definitely not be accurate. Lavinia's extreme diet starts with her main meal of the day. Take my bowl out. I love my bowl because it's got chocolate written all over it. Usually I pour some out, then decide whether it's too much or not enough. It's definitely too much, so I take a handful out, put it back in there, still too much, and take some out again. No, it's still too much. This is my main meal for the day. At the end of the day, I usually have one of these. One rich tea biscuit to take my tablets with. Feels like it's too much. But it only adds up to about 100 calories. It's a starvation diet. Someone like Lavinia needs around 2,000 calories just for her body to function properly. I feel like I can survive from that little food. But rationally I know you can't just because I've done nutrition degree and I know it is dangerous. Breakfast is on the way to work. Then Lavinia doesn't think about it too much and doesn't feel so guilty. I am kind of enjoying it, just enjoying the taste. But I know I'm not allowed to enjoy it and things. But I do feel panicky, a bit anxious really, because I'm just scared of how much weight I might be gaining. Katie and her sister are in Bath on the hunt for a bargain. She's a perfect 10, but she wears a 12. Baby, keep a little two for me. <laughs> they are really cool. When I look in the mirror and I look at my body, I don't see anything I like. It has made me like bring sick up before. <laughs> I just don't like what I see. Going shopping with Katie is the most frustrating thing in the world. When I look at my arms in the mirror, I just think they're too big. And then when I look at my stomach, if it's too out. I could look at her and I would think, it looks absolutely gorgeous on you, what, what's wrong? But she'll point out the most stupidest things and say, oh, this bit looks fat or that bit looks fat. I like it because it looks quite flat on my tummy. It doesn't show off my thighs. Katie's obsession is carbohydrates, calories and fat. Apart from the antidepressants, Lavinia takes them as well, every morsel of food is closely monitored. 100 millilitres provides 34 calories and 5 grams of carbohydrate. Now I don't want all that car carbohydrate. 0 0.2 in the sweeteners, 7, 8, 9, 2 coffees would have 4.5 grams of carbohydrate and 4 calories. Jelly's got no carbohydrate so I could actually have some jelly. At the end of the day, I can sum it all up and make sure I don't go above 20 carbohydrates and so I can make sure that I don't go above-ish 200 calories. Katie's extreme diet is designed to cause ketosis, forcing her body to break down fat reserves to get the energy it needs. We food for the week. We make up soup. It's still quite a lot, I think. I like having things in cups. Because then you're like drinking it with a spoon. 
like that. So it's not like big thing on your fork and then shove it in your mouth if you get what I mean. People have suffered anorexia nervosa for hundreds of years. But what's new is this pro-ana movement. It was created by the internet and both Katie and Lavinia have logged on for inspiration and help. Eating disorders and secrecy go hand in hand, so the internet is an ideal place for troubled minds to create virtual communities, because nobody need know who you are or what you're doing. For pro Annas, these are sites that give support at times of real desperation. They claim they save lives. But they're condemned by doctors who say they actively encourage a mental illness that kills one in ten. Today there are hundreds of websites, many promoting the extreme quest for skeletal bodies, many secretly run by young girls from their bedrooms, without their parents' knowledge. Lavinia's mental health problems started with the trauma of moving from her native Holland to England when she was eight. Today, as she videos the start of her latest anorexic episode, she's at work, where ironically, she processes data on nutrition. I managed to force myself not to eat and stuff, which was quite, quite easy actually in the end because you start feeling high and you don't need any food and you just stop being hung feeling hungry and stuff. So now, now I feel really good about myself. This is my lunch, my Diet Coke. That's all I have to eat until I go to bed. You've got to feel powerful. When you don't eat, I feel so powerful and things like that. I feel in control, but at the same time, realistically, I know it's not control. The eating disorder is controlling me. Lavinia is getting medical help, but a visit to her psychiatrist means passing an eating disorders clinic. I feel like if I'm not in there or if I'm not seeing anyone there, then obviously I'm too fat and I'm failure and things. And I just kind of like look at them and just see how nice and thin they are and how flat the stomach is and how loose the trousers is. And I'm really fat in comparison, which I know is really daft and stuff because they're really ill, which is why they're in there. And this is what Lavinia envies. These young anorexics had such critically low body weights, they were brought into Rhodes Farm Clinic in London for urgent treatment. Sophie is just 11 years old. She was three and a half stone when she came here, and it all started when she joined a diet club in the school playground. They were just like competing against one another and uh, seeing who could lose weight the quickest and the most amount of weight and stuff like that. I eventually became like scared of just looking at food because I was scared like if I looked at food then I would um, bring extra fat to my body or something or if I sniffed in food and it sounds totally ridiculous but it was terrifying really. Sophie's age may be shocking, but anorexics are getting younger and younger. Their condition is invariably caused by a combination of problems and traumas. They feel the only way they can get some control in their lives is by controlling their eating. And one of Sophie's problems was growing up. I didn't really want to become a woman or a teenager. I wanted to stay a little girl for a bit longer. And it kind of like scared me having periods and becoming pregnant and stuff like that. There are an estimated 450,000 anorexics in Britain. The vast majority are female, but around 8% are male. Most sufferers are between 10 and 19. <coughs> Rhodes Farm Clinic only treats children. They do get regular therapy, but priority one is calories. Patients have to gain weight, and food has to be eaten in the blue kitchen or here in the brown. In the brown kitchen, it's a supervised, um, so you have to eat everything that's on your plate and you have to scrape your plate, and if you don't, then that does get replaced. 
You have to eat within certain time limits. It's about 40 minutes for a main meal and a dessert. Sometimes it can be a competition when you first come in who can be the slowest and things like that. So that's all like monitored by staff. Uh, come on, keep up with the time, love. Oh. I try to get it so that they eat normally, so like you would in a restaurant or whatever. We're in the blue kitchen at the moment. This is an unsupervised kitchen. The, the, the children really left to their own devices here. They make their own breakfast, and we really trust them to clear their plates and not to, not to be cheating. Refeeding these children is one of the most important things that we do. At low weights, they're really risking their long-term health. I can guarantee that while a child is in here, I will restore her weight and she will gain a kilogram a week. What I can't guarantee is that she's going to work effectively with her therapist and start to think rationally about the problems that she has. That's something that I have to leave for her to decide. But family therapy is also crucial and it takes place in private cabins at the bottom of the garden. If we don't see some changes in the family, if we don't talk to them and try and find out why the child wants to starve themselves, then we're going to be sending that child home to exactly the same pressures, the same environment, and not surprisingly, she'll relapse. The Vineyards lost another kilogram. She's down to 62.5, nine stone eight. I've lost weight. <laughs> and she's still confiding in her video diary. These trousers, they were fitting really snugly about a month ago, but now I've lost all this weight around my stomach. I've still got a lot of lard and I've got a lot of fat and that I'm a pig and that I'm ugly and that I'm horrible and things like that. And I'm still a fat bitch. Set myself a temporary target weight, which is 58 kilograms. Um, but I know deep down I want to be less than 54. I'm feeling really ill, headachey all the time, really weak and dizzy and every single time I stand up I, everything goes black and things. All I want is to lose weight and I'm quite willing to do whatever it takes to lose the weight even if I feel ill. When I first found the Piranha websites, it made me feel like a part of something instead of something I was doing on my own. Like it was more of an organised way of doing things. I think like that. Anorexia is a lifestyle, not a disease. This internet community is largely unregulated. Although it caters for a range of eating disorders, it's dominated by pro Anna websites. It was like people like me who've had troubles with eating and stuff like that. It's got things here like avoid the plate, clean house, get busy, hoeing and throwing. I thought it was really good because everyone was helping each other, other people who, who are on the same wavelength as you. And this is all stuff to keep you from eating. There's a variety of sites. Some are evangelical, promoting the eating disorder as a religion that must be followed and offering radical tips. One of them, I thought, was sticking a toothbrush down your throat to make yourself sick or putting a little object on a piece of string, swallowing it and then pulling it out to make yourself sick again. These websites help starvation buddies get in touch and show so-called inspiration pictures promoting the desire to be thin. Starvation sells, are you buying it? I like that. Are you buying it? Because I look at that and I'm like, yeah, I think that looks nice. Users of the sites adopt names which reveal how they're thinking. The pro Anna pages embrace everything from deathbed anorexics to overweight wannabes. Most sites simply give users the opportunity to talk to each other. This is how my apartment should look like with the balcony entrance in the bedroom. 
Today, Lavinia is checking out the new flat she wants to buy. One little window and one big window. The big windows in my lounge. I think this is kind of a massive, massive step. The flat itself is £200,000. It's really expensive, but that's Oxford. I've never dreamt that I would be able to do this. This is the showroom's bathroom. I don't think my anorexia really affects my lifestyle or my choices and things. I can just li live a normal life, really. Just depends on your determination, I think. I look at you, Katie, and I think she's so pretty, and she's already got a really fabulous figure. Why on earth would she want to lose more weight? Have you ever thought that doing what you're doing to yourself now is going to, like, stop your body from developing how it should? I think it already you, has. Exactly. You're just depriving yourself of things that are going to help you grow. Yeah, if I've already, like, destroyed my body that mu that bit. No, I wouldn't say you've destroyed your body. You or just stopped it from growing. Just, then what's the point in trying to make it grow any more? I would never, ever, ever go to the extremes that you're going to because I'd worry so much for my health. I don't feel ill, though. You don't look as healthy as a normal 17-year-old girl should be. I did a health test and it says my health is actually two years younger than... Oh, that's on the internet? Yes. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff on the internet that's designed to put crap in your head, Katie. I think... The doctors she's seen so far have just dismissed her because she doesn't look like she's on a deathbed. Because... Because she she isn't, you know, say, like, five stone or something like that. They, t they take one look at her and say, well, she's got a few months yet until we actually need to start doing something. But by then, it's just too late. It's now a month since Lavinia started her latest starvation diet. In 29 days, I've lost one stone. And that is absolutely crap. So, if you can tell me where I've lost weight, please let me know because I can definitely tell you I have not lost any weight to what I can see. But I know I can't cut out the breakfast and the snack at night because I need it to take my tablets. It just makes me feel like lard ass and disgusting about myself and just a normal hatred about my body, really. Lavinia Walker's trying out the gym to see if she can tone the bits of her body she doesn't like without resorting to starving herself. Okay, sit, starting off sitting here, all you get is to do is really work on pulling those abs in tight, breathe that bottom as well, and down. An increase in firmness and muscle tone is going to be done by resistance training. That's going to slightly increase the size of your muscles. Mm -hmm. Muscle is the only place that fat is burnt. Yep. All you're going to do by giving yourself more muscle is increase the amount of fat that you can burn, therefore speeding up the process. Yeah. Okay? But Lavinia's diet means she's losing at least as much muscle as fat. And while she is underweight, the fat content of her body is relatively high. So that means 28% of your body weight is fat. I kind of knew it was going to be like that, but it's quite disappointing. <laughs> okay. okay. So number at the bottom is your BMI, which is a body mass index. Under 20 is underweight. Right. So actually, for your height, you're actually underweight. What well, the body fat percentage shows, though, however, is that you could at least lose some body fat. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see you getting down to maybe 25%. You don't ever want to get below 10. That's <laughs> not very nice. Three, two, squeeze that bum, and down. And just lower the sits down. Try and keep your knees here if you can. I think it would help a lot. But I can't imagine myself doing it really so just too tired to do it all I do sit-ups to work my stomach muscles and then I do these things where you lay on your front and lift your upper body which works off the fat on your back 
my worries with Katie is that she's going to get to a stage where she can't pull herself out of it anymore and she'll just go into a downward spiral. And that's what frightens me more than anything. So. Well, one thing is that I learned that you burn off 400 calories in your sleep. So if I'm burning off 400 calories in my sleep and only eating 200 calories a day, then there's no calories left to burn up. The thought of losing her is just more than I can bear sometimes. Do you think it's really that serious? I think it could become that serious, yeah. Because I've seen her in worse states, I mean a lot worse states than what she, she is now. She's cutting herself, taking overdoses with paracetamol. She was in hospital three times with overdoses, and they said to her, if she takes another one, it will kill her. And her mum has every reason to be worried, because doctors see a reality that's very different to Katie's. This is how bad it got, how bad I've got. I mean, my shoulders are bony, stick out everywhere, and it's uncomfortable to sit on my back. And then my neck, the, all my spine sticks out. I am the size of a five-year-old, which for a 17-year-old obviously isn't very healthy. Hannah is the latest patient at Rhodes Farm Clinic. She's a dance student who was exercising far too much and eating far too little. Her dramatic weight loss happened in just six months. I'm not allowed to do too much exercise at all because I could die tomorrow. I really, you know, it's that serious because of my heart not functioning properly in my organs. I've just put that much strain on my body that it just can't cope. It makes me feel upset and horrible that I've done this to myself but at the same time it makes me determined to get better and to put on the weight. I love camping. I always used to camp with So we'll make you the chief cook. <laughs> we know from research that's been done in many countries that probably around 10% of people who develop anorexia nervosa will die from it. People who continue life at these weights that we see will develop osteoporosis, they will be infertile, they'll have heart problems, some of them will have bowel problems. They do not live long and happy lives. Eating disorders really can torment the mind. In Lavinia's case, she's overdosed and harmed herself. Incredibly, she even tried to remove her own fat with DIY liposuction. This is a scar on my inside of my thigh. Now, I had this bizarre idea once that I could do liposuction to myself. I cut myself and things and tried to suck the fat out. But <laughs> of course, that's absolutely impossible. I've also got scars on my breasts where I previously tried to cut myself. Um, I tried to cut my breasts off, but again that didn't work. Lavinia's lost nearly an eighth of her body weight, so today she has no plans for liposuction, but things are getting tough. I had this really embarrassing. I'm also feeling quite uncomfortable with my bowels and stuff. I haven't actually been for one and a half to two weeks. However, I am having a big dilemma in my head because obviously I can't be physically ill and stuff for work and it is making me think maybe I should start eating and things. The pro-Anna internet movement is worldwide and many sites like this one are based in the UK. Hi, I'm Jen, the editor of the Hidden Bus Fly website. I'm 15 years old and I'm 5 foot 7. I'm 7 stone 3 and my target weight is 5 stone 10. And it will take forever, but with Anna, anything's possible. Jen's words are spoken by an actress because her parents don't know that she's anorexic 
or that she runs a website from her bedroom. And the site was made as an, like an escape from judgmental people, like as part of an underground community. If I'm talking to people, then it makes me think that I'm not the only person who has to go through this every day. Jen was just 13 when she set up her first site. It had moderate content. Everything she needed was on the internet. Probably the stupidest thing I read was that we're here to teach people to be anorexic and that we tell non-sufferers to become Anna. I'm yet to find a site that does. I've accepted Anna as part of me because I feel like it's become part of my character. It's pro-Anna lifestyle. Um, it, become, it can become like a way of life and that's what it has become for many of us. But saying it's a lifestyle choice implies that I chose to become Anna in the first place and I can tell you I didn't. I never wish an eating disorder on anyone and I can safely say it can be sheer hell. This site has now been closed and the outcry against pro-Anna websites means many others are being shut down and reinvented every day. They do warn people about their content but most doctors say that's not good enough. I really think that pro-anorexic websites are disgraceful. I wish that the servers would do more about banning them. They cannot be helpful for anybody. I think very young and vulnerable children are looking at these and they're clearly going to be detrimental to their health. I think anyone who does have anorexia will not be helped by these websites. They can only encourage a behaviour that's going to cause them long-term damage to their health. Pro-anors will never agree with a total ban. And while Lavinia is anti the more extreme sites, she claims others have given her vital support when she felt suicidal. I used mainly the forums and the chat rooms. If I didn't have them, I would have probably not be here now. The ones I used to visit were very good because they also told you about all the dangers of each method that may be used to lose weight, for example, how bad it is to purge yourself, how bad it is to swallow cotton wool, um, how bad it is to take diet tablets and laxatives and diuretics and things like that. In that sense, it is really positive because they're telling you not to do those things. They're wanting you to do it in a more healthy way. Lavinia also says the print media and TV provide as much thinspiration for anorexics as the websites. It's all part of a modern culture where body image is everything, with young women in particular under constant pressure to be slim. When I look at the pictures, I hate myself. I hate myself so, so much. In comparison to them, I am hippopotamus. If you gain weight, you're criticised. If you lose weight, you're criticised. It's kind of like really hard because what is the perfect body? And there's one particular part of Lavinia's body that she thinks is far from perfect. I don't really like the look of my breasts because I find them quite big. I can't say that I can make you look smaller, but some bras just give you more lift and support, which creates a, a different shape, and that might be what you're looking for. When you put bras on, you have to actually shake into them. You've now got a waist. It feels a lot more supported, mm. and so it feels a lot more comfortable. In some ways, I look the same in terms of bigness, but then in a more attractive way big, rather than just a horrible old granny looking big. <laughs> Despite radical pro anas celebrating anorexia, most sufferers would be delighted to get a cure and now they have a new hope. There's no doubt that genes play a part in anorexia nervosa. There's very strong evidence that there's a genetic contribution. We're born with the vulnerability to develop it, and anorexia only develops in societies such as ours where thinness is promoted as an ideal. 
So those are the conditions in which anorexia can arise, but they're not sufficient to explain anorexia because otherwise everyone would have it, and clearly they don't. But for the first time, scientists now think they've found a reason why some people get anorexia, and it's all to do with the brain. Now, with our brain scanning studies, what we've shown is that there's reduced blood flow in the temporal region of the brain. The lighter colour is actually normal blood flow, and the absence of the light colour is a reduction in blood flow. So what we've got is a one-sided reduction in blood flow. And these are in the brains of people with anorexia nervosa. Approximately two-thirds to three-quarters of our patients have this reduction in blood flow. This may explain most of the symptoms of anorexia, like a distorted body image. And it could be a big breakthrough. We need to understand better the nature of this abnormality. Once that's understood, we may well be able to develop a treatment. Katie is also into the scientific approach, while Lavinia, the nutritionist, only wants to eat. Maybe a bit of chocolate. Katie tries to give her body what it needs, but at around 300 calories a day, her pro anna diet is dangerously deficient. I've got um, multivitamins and iron for my nails and my hair and my face, my skin, your eyes. It's just making sure I've got vitamins in me. When you're deficient in vitamins, your appetite goes, but what you also get with that is insomnia and you can't sleep. So I've started taking them again. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, am I putting you off your beans on toast? No. <laughs> making me cherish it even more. <laughs> From when I've not eaten before and not taken vitamins or anything like lived off skin milk, you do get ill. You do, obviously, you do get very ill and you get really bad stomach and stuff like that and I don't particularly want that again. So that's why I take these. So I've, I've thought about it and, yeah, I've planned it out and stuff. Yeah, but your body's eating You can itself. say that as much as you want, Ali. I've still got energy. Basically. But Katie also gets support, as well as criticism, from Brother Ali and the rest of the family. A messenger tell you, a whisper in your ear, follows a common gesture, that everything's all clear. I just can't believe he wrote a song about me, really. Begins to steady as the worry fades away. Because I worry a lot, like every time like just in playing it around the house every time I hear it it's like I'm just like oh yeah don't worry so much I love that will inspire you in dreams you aren't so bad cause you are not destined to wade through the floods of tears and that's why I'll stand by you I love you Ali thank you it, Katie obviously feels yeah unhappy about herself deep inside and it I guess the song's really just trying to reassure her that there's nothing really wrong with her and you know and sometimes she feels down but it's just life you know testing you now it's six and a half weeks since I started this shit and I've lost in total approximately 10 kilograms, which is one stone seven pounds. However, at last, I can see some bones here, so I suppose that's okay, but still not enough. The is down to 58 kilos, nine stone one. But worst of all for her, she started eating. For breakfast, I actually had a Mars bar. <laughs> large fries and a dairy milk McFlurry. Unfortunately I had a pizza today. When I do eat I feel really bad and guilty and like this how I do at the moment and really bloated and like failure and like fat bitch, shithead, cow. I think this could be the end of her starvation diet that the next few days will be kind of like a decisive factor really whether I start eating a bit more or continue eating what I'm eating. 
Katie is also approaching a critical period. But for her, it's unexpected, and it's a matter of life and death. Katie Parker certainly enjoys a night out. So fucking drunk. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but it can also trigger her mental health problems. I just can't relate to anyone anymore. No, no, I don't think it's anything to do with like dieting or anything like that, or extreme dieting or whatever. But I just feel too consumed to talk to people anymore. And four weeks after this was filmed, Katie took a cocktail of drugs and alcohol and cut both her arms with a knife. From there to there, slashed on both sides, and it looked appalling, and she was like almost out of it in her head because she obviously had taken all these tablets and it's just a horrible horrible sight to see you know i don't know it's just sorry i just wish you know i don't know i just just wanted to go away katie was found in her bedroom her mum videoed the drama, but then had second thoughts. At that point in time, I wanted to show the world what my little girl was going through on a regular basis. And it was a cry for help. And I wanted people to say, OK, we can, we, we can see what's happening here and we will help you. We didn't realise it was so bad, but we do now and we'll help you. And that's why I did. And the reason I erased it... <laughs> was because I looked at it and I, I didn't want people to see my little girl suffering. You took the pills first. I took the pills first and then sort of cut, cut myself. You know, you want to grip your hands, you know, when you dig your nails in your hands, you want to do that, you want to like really just... Feel the pain? Yeah. When you actually grip your hands or you cut yourself, does it make it feel that it's... Yeah, kind of. Kind of? Yeah. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> oh dear, I feel stupid now. <laughs> I'm, it's just habit. <laughs> Suicide attempt, habit, great. Better than smoking that, isn't it? <laughs> Katie's suicide attempt hasn't changed her pro-Anna views. She's continuing her extreme diet, still convinced she doesn't have an eating disorder. She was ecstatic because we were looking around the supermarket and she spotted this 10 calorie soup and she went, wow, 10 calorie soup, I don't have to worry, I can have soup now. <laughs> and that's it. And then bread. Nimble bread. And what else? And cans of tuna. Whoa, tuna sandwiches. What a treat. Now, is that low fat dog food? <laughs> Better be. <laughs> Life continues to be difficult for Lavinia, too. And she's gained a kilogram. And because I'm weighing 59 kilograms, I'm known fat, I'm just fat, 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 fat. Over the years, Lavinia's had every form of treatment available, but nothing's worked. She has wanted to recover, but has then had to wait so long for help that she's changed her mind. Her latest therapy is a total of 20 hours. Can you explain to me how 20 hours of therapy can change lifetime of eating problems, of changing your thought patterns and changing everything you've learnt and things. Just in 20 hours, you must be joking. But here, Lavinia might get the help she wants. And Jane presenting is a six-year-old girl with rapid weight loss, so ask six months, I think four and a half stone. Discord. This community intensive care team near Pontypridd in Wales is pioneering a new approach. New patients are seen immediately and get visits as often as twice a day. Treatment generally takes up to nine months. 
and it's unique because severe anorexics are given therapy in their own homes. This is very different to the philosophy of you come to me in a place where I work with anorexia and it will be my job to kind of open your head up, get the anorexia outfit and throw it and send you back to your family as good as new. The thought is that doesn't work that way at all. Conventional books would say that they have to be treated in a specialist unit. Our treatment has said that let's take the specialists to the environment where the disease is. And in eight years, we have no regrets. Hello. Hi. Hi. It's a speedier way of recovery, and the recovery seemed to last for longer, but obviously it would because it was acquired where the problem is. The team forges relationships with its patients. Generally, they're not pressurized to eat, but like Alex, they're helped to discover a reason to want to start eating again. Um, we went out for lunch yesterday, didn't we, to a cafe? Yeah. If you told me, like, six months ago that I'd have done it, I'd have just laughed, you know what I mean? Because it just, it wouldn't have been possible, basically. So I really feel like it's definitely getting better. But, but, but generally, I think I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for you, and so you're making progress nicely. And then he has to look after these kids, because like... Alex has made huge strides, and a close friendship with her nurse therapist, Donna John. How are you finding sort of having the treatment at home? Um, I feel quite lucky in the way that I, that I am having the chance to do it sort of on my own terms, if you know what I mean, but with support as well. Mm. That support includes all the important people in her life, and she's not in an unfamiliar hospital, which could add to her problems. So, like, going or wherever, and, like, I'd be not so much force-fed, but I'd be given, like, set meals and all that kind of thing and surveyed all the time. To be in home treated, I find it, like, a lot more comforting being around, like, things that I know. Lavinia's decision to be anorexic is putting her through agonies, but her weight is still dropping. I was down to 54.5 kilograms, which I'm mega, mega, mega pleased about, and proud about and things as well. However, I seem to be addicted to McDonald's at the moment, which is quite bad. I'm supposed to be on my diet, and I go and have a McDonald's. I feel like I'm giving in and I seem to be kind of giving in to all my cravings and things. Today, Katie's come to Bath College. She's still on her diet and she wants expert advice. Well, I'm eating um, about 300 or 350 calories a day. Would you know like what sort of things I could eat to stay healthy and, and stay in that range? to include all the nutrition that you need on 350 calories, I'd say it was probably impossible. Yeah. If, if you eat uh, under 1,000 calories a day, you're putting your body under severe stress. Right. Huge amounts of strain. Right. Because it can't carry out all the jobs it wants to do. 350 calories is not nearly enough. Yeah. When you eat below 1,000 calories, your body is very clever, and it goes into emergency mode and it lowers your metabolic rate. You use the meagre food that you're taking in more and more efficiently. And that means Katie's body is actually resisting losing its fat. So if she's determined to cut flab, what should she do? What you need to do, first of all, I would say, is raise your met metabolic rate. And you do that by, by exercise. Yeah. If you combine hiring your, your metabolic rate and allowing you to eat at least a thousand calories a day, you will lose lots of weight on that. Yeah. More weight than you need to lose. Are you sure? <laughs> Today, I've been absolutely exhausted and I think really I should have gone home because I literally slept at my desk for most of the day. I just feel like giving up to fight and things. I just don't feel like I've got the real power at the moment. I just want to crash. I'm stuck between 54 and 55 kilograms and I'm eating and I feel disgraced and disgusted and a failure as an anorexic 
to eat and I just want to stop eating again and just get back to the three crackers and the one cracker and that's it but I don't think I'm able to anymore and I don't want to go back to being so fat again it's a big day for Katie and Lavinia. We've invited them both to Wales to meet for the first time. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lavinia. Hi, I'm Katie. Found this eating disorder on the net and it's called Picker. It's for people who eat like inanimate objects and wallpaper paste and oh unnutritious food. Hello. And we've also told them about Dr. Darwish's pioneering home therapy for anorexics. So they're here to learn more. So how many people have you got on your waiting list at the moment? I don't have a waiting list. As I say, you refer to no. the day we've seen today. And they've been introduced to Louise Corns. She's one of the team's many success stories. Her weight plunged to five stone seven and her organs were failing. But now she eats just like any other teenager. I had a hell of a lot of support because I had a kebab, chicken kebab for the tea. And I thought, oh, I've got to have supper now, so what do I fancy? I thought, I fancy some chocolate. So I had ripple bars in the fridge. I thought, I'll have that. And I thought, do I dunk it in coffee or do I just eat it normally? <laughs> well, I found. Was it your choice what you would eat instead? Yeah. Stuff? So and it wasn't them I'm, saying, oh, you should eat that. Yeah. You just went out and kind of found something you fancied. Yeah, because they'd find stuff which I'd enjoy, which would be like peas yep. on a cooked dinner. And I love potatoes and gravy and chicken. So they'd be cooking chicken dinners. So then I'd eat more of those. Yeah. And then they'd slowly like put a little bit more chicken on, a little bit more peas, a little more potatoes. Yes. And stuff like that. And then they just go by what you enjoy the most. But at the time you think, I don't enjoy any food. But... You do. <laughs> you do enjoy food. That's really good. Did you feel any kind of guilt or anything? No, I didn't. That's the thing, I really don't good. Now. After seeing Louise, I feel like, well, there's always a possibility of me getting better. I would believe that I would have sorted things out by now if there was that treatment available for me. I think I'm quite annoyed because I wouldn't have wasted my life as much as I have. I just think I don't have a problem. Right. So I do get seen. But, but it's not really I... helping you because you're in denial. Like You think there's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. I was like that. Yeah. I was running on adrenaline, basically. Lovely little oval face, which is a perfect face shape. A lovely cheekbones, nice big eyes as well. Beautiful smile. Katie's come to a beauty college to get a quick fix for one aspect of her appearance, but achieving the perfect body is much more of a challenge. But she's convinced that Pro Anna is the way to get the shape she wants. It is extreme dieting, but it's also a lifestyle she has chosen. I don't think I have a problem. I don't think I have an eating disorder. The eating is basically just me wanting to lose weight and me wanting to be thin, to be happy with myself. It, I guess it's my style. Look that looks really nice. <laughs> yeah, are you happy with that? It looks lovely, okay. It really does. I think I look really nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's the end of Lavinia's anorexic journey. When I started, I was 68 kilograms, which was 10 stone 7. Whoa, minge. How can people say that looks nice? That is just disgusting. That means I've approximately lost 16 kilograms, which is 2 stone 5. That's pretty crap, isn't it? <laughs> but then again, that's kind of like a quarter of the year I have spent obsessing about this sh crappy crappy shit thing drives me mad despite all the pain and all the problems Lavinia says it's shown how she can choose to be anorexic and still lead a normal life 
this is my shoulders which I quite like now as you can see it is a lot more bony my belly as you can see is still massive hasn't reduced at all I suppose I do have some hip bones now however I'm still not happy with it it's still too big I know I've lost weight on my arms because of how I can put my um, hand now around my arm psychologically I don't see myself as any thinner the scales may say I'm thinner which is something that makes me feel good but I can't see it and I hope this just helps people see what it's actually like for someone like me I think that is what is important to me and I feel it's time for me to finish this journey with you.